All right, I'd like to show you just a few other things you can do with the Twilight Renderer. You'll have to make sure first you have your set of tools that look like these right here, bottom part of my toolkit. And what I would do first is color all your objects using the materials and just use colors. Don't use any of these other things like the stone or the roof or metal. You just wanna use plain colors. You can see here I have all the balls colored and ready for me to do the next step with my Twilight Renderer. I'm going to grab the Paint Bucket tool as part of the Twilight Renderer toolkit here. And you'll see it opens up a window and it gives me the eyedropper tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click the eyedropper on my first ball here. And when it originally loads, I was playing with this a minute ago, it's going to show up as a flat block. So it'll, it'll give you a preview here what it's going to look like. The easiest way to get interesting surfaces out of this is go to templates and pick something that you would want. So maybe you'd want to make this look like metal and it'll give it reflective properties similar to metal. Uh, you can change how shiny it is. Maybe I want to bump this up to super shiny. There's other things you can do in here, but I would recommend not really playing around with anything other than just using uh, the template. So I have that one picked and I can move on to my next object. So I'll just use my eyedropper tool. And you can see this one's very flat. It's a dark green in the preview. And maybe I want to make this one a perfect reflection high. You'll see here it'll change. It gives me what that looks like. And I'll move on to one of my other ones. And you can see it renders this really bright green. And maybe I want to make this glossy paint. You can see the gloss comes through in there. Maybe I want to bump up or down my shininess. You can see what that does to it. So to preview these things, I've already colored a lot of the other objects. I'm just going to go to the render button, which is the green on button. It'll open up a window for you. And this is where we could render something uh, reasonably quick. So I'm going to go make this 480 by 853, which would be in the uh, 16 by 9 spectrum, which would be widescreen. And just for preview purposes, I'm going to only put on low or a low plus. If it asks you this, do you want to render the current selection only? It's because I have an object selected. You're going to want to tell it no. You want it to render the whole scene should go through this reasonably quick. And there we go, it does two passes. You can see that these both, or all the balls have some sort of uh, interesting quality to them now. These are the ones in the back are a little more reflective. And of course, the higher you set this, I know it doesn't show up because I'm using two screens, but the higher you set this render preset, the longer it's going to take. And I'll tell you, medium is medium plus is about as high as you would ever want to go. High, high plus take an extraordinarily long time. Uh, and I can even open up some of the ones that I was making yesterday. there before. And I can show you just a few of these. You can see I have a few I rendered on low, medium, high. And I can do high plus and I'll show you how high quality those can get. You can see uh, the definition is much better than what we just did. Um, but of course, you notice that that probably took it, um, I don't know, 20 seconds to render. And so if you were doing that with an animation, it would, it would be exponential with every frame. And I'll tell you, it slows down over time. Um, so for now, just stick to uh, lows and mediums to render still images. And this should help you guys. You can add a little more dynamic uh, qualities either to your animation or to pull out uh, interesting stills from your models.